All right, good morning, guys. Uh, we have got another Geno Jennings response, and we're going to continue looking at a segment from the previous video that I already addressed. Um, and we've had a whole lot of people come into the comments and decide that they want to try to defend the errors that are being pointed out. And so we're going to go back and do some more. We're going to specifically be addressing his claim from Mark chapter 10 that um, sending away is divorce. The two are not equal. They're nowhere equal ever in Scripture. And so we're going to take a look at this, and I'm going to demonstrate to you from, uh, from the Word what, uh, what, what his errors are in this and why this is important. So this is going to take a little bit. Uh, buckle your seatbelts, grab a cup of coffee or, uh, you know, something, and, uh, and have a seat. Let's, uh, let's take a look at this. Okay, guys, so let's get started on this. I'm going to start by playing a clip from Gino. This is a clip that comes from uh, First Church of or First Church Truth of God broadcast May 28th, 2023, uh, Sunday live in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, Again, I don't follow him, uh, really have no care at all for, uh, for some of the things that he's got. Um, had no knowledge that he was up that direction. Had I known and known some of the things that, uh, that he said now, um, would have been interesting. I'd, I would be interested in a debate, but I'm not going to walk into his congregation and just try to shake things up from the floor because that's not, that's not the proper time nor the proper place. A scheduled event. Absolutely. So here we go. Let's uh, let's play this clip. I'm going to play about a, uh, I don't know, it's about a four, four and a half minute segment. And, uh, and then we're going to go back and start disassembling it, okay? But I want you to hear the whole thing in context. And I realize some of you guys, woo, you know, you, you, he's, he's your superhero. He's wearing a cape. Um, all right. Let's see what uh, let, let's see what the word says. Okay, here we go. To everybody else. That's right. Listen at this. Saint Mark chapter ten. We'll start at verse one. Follow me. And he arose from thence and cometh into the coast of Judea. And what? By the farther side of Jordan. Yeah. And the people resort unto him again. And as he was wont, he taught them again. Yes. And the Pharisees came to him. And asked him, is it lawful? If it's lawful. For a man to put away his wife? For a man to put away his wife. Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Tempting him. Tempting him. And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command? What did Moses say? And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorce. Moses let you do it. And to put her away. Yes. And Jesus answered and Jesus said unto them, gave them the reason why Moses allowed it. For the hardness of your heart. For the hardness. So they got over social media. Let's tell me, Pastor Jennings, was David wrong? Was Solomon wrong? Was it? They even went as far as justifying concubines. My Lord. These are church people. Sure. So called. Oh, yeah. Was Abraham wrong when he had uh, Hagar? Oh, All that was allowed back then. Back then. All that was allowed back then, but the boss came on the scene now. That's right. And Jesus Christ is the boss, buddy. That's right. Huh? And Jesus is. Jesus is greater than Moses, greater than Abraham, greater than Isaac, greater than Enoch, greater than Solomon. That's right. Greater than they all. That's right. Hear this. St. Mark chapter 10, now I'm at verse 5. That's what? And Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart. For the hardness. Of your heart, he wrote you this precept. Because of your hard heart, hard heart, Moses wrote you this precept. But from the beginning but of the creation, from the beginning of time, God made them male and female. From the beginning of time, God made them male and female. And female, one man, one woman. That's right. From the beginning of time, that's right. That was established. One man, one woman. And David, 
Solomon and the rest of them was not back in the beginning of time. That's right. God let you know what his purpose was and his agenda from the beginning of time. From the beginning of the creation, God made the male and female. And what? For for this cause shall a man leave his father and, and a mother. a man leave his father and mother. And cleave to his wife. Cleave to his wives. His wife. His wives. And cleave to his wife. And they what? And they twain wait, shall... Wait, 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 wait. Amen. And they twain. They twain mean they two. That's right. He and her. That's right. Not he and her, 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 her. That's right. Wonderful, brother. They twine me, they too. That's right. Not they, him, her, her, another her, little her, big her. It's all funny. Old Mac her. That's right. No. Let's That's see what right. word says. Like old MacDonald have a farm. That's right. That's right. Yeah, me good. Yeah, me good. Yeah, me good. And they twain shall be one flesh. One flesh. So then they are no more twain, they but are no one longer flesh. two, but one. What therefore God hath joined what together. God hath joined together. Let, let not, not man, man put asunder. Put asunder. And in the house his disciples asked him again of the same matter. And said what? And he saith unto them. Jesus said to them. Whosoever shall put away his wife. Look at the boss. Oh. I want all you bishops and elders and homemade apostles and liver stock bishops and pastors. That's right. Listen at the Bible. St. Mark chapter 10, I'm at verse 11. You got another wife and your first wife living? Get out the pulpit. That's right. Get out of it. Or stay in it and go to hell. That's right. Yes, sir. That's right. Doesn't Get know back. what he's talking and he about. And saith unto them, Whosoever shall, put Whosoever shall put away his wife. You can call yourself an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, a bishop, or an elder. You can call yourself whatever you like. That's right. Amen. But when you come back to the Bible, the Bible going to talk here. Yeah. And he saith unto them, Whosoever, Whosoever shall, put away his wife, shall put away his wife and marry another. And this is so plain. And, and go marry another. What did Jesus say he is? Committeth adultery against her. Amen. That's the Bible talking. It's the Bible. And if a woman and if a woman shall put away her husband, shall put away her husband and be married to another and get another man, she committed she adultery. She commit adultery. Adultery. How plain is that? That's plain. All right, Mr. Jennings, let's tell, uh, go back and take a look at this thing, all right? So we're going to go back to the beginning. We heard it uh, starts at 59, 51 is where we're going to start. Um, and what we need to do, first thing we need to do here is understand uh, this passage. Let's take a look at, there's something very important going on here that we need to understand with regards to the words that are being used, okay? So... I uh, believe he is reading out of the KJV. <clears throat> I, I wasn't reading closely or wasn't paying attention closely to that, but the uh, this is NASB 95. I can change it to the KJV. We, let's do that. We'll just uh, for change it to the KJV. <clears throat> so I am using a Bible software here. It's blueletterbible.org. You can use this online. It's available to every single person that's sitting here watching. Okay, so uh, you're probably watching this on the internet. Therefore, you have access to this study aid as a way for you to take a look at Scripture and do some study. Okay, you are responsible to do your own digging. I get a whole lot of people in the uh, in the chat saying, you know, I believe in Pastor Jennings. Well, I don't believe in Pastor Jennings. I don't believe in any man. I believe in the Word of the Most High, and I believe that He's also given us the ability to do some serious work and serious study in it. Uh, generations ago, that wasn't possible. You pretty much had to trust what the pastor had unless you could get your hands on a, on a number of different books, um, study aids. Uh, I've been using those for years, but now uh, through the modern technology that we have in the internet and, uh, and computing, anybody can learn to use this, and it's very easy. Okay, so uh, I would encourage you to do your own due diligence. But here's the deal, okay? So Pharisees came to him. We're going to start in, in verse 2. The first, first verse isn't, isn't that significant here. But Pharisees came to him and asked him, is it lawful for a man to put away 
his wife. Okay. Notice it doesn't say divorce. It says to put away his wife. And their purpose in asking the question this way is to tempt him. They're tempting him. They're trying to figure out. They're, they're twisting the scriptures just a little bit for the purpose of trying to trip him up. Okay? I think we would all agree on that. But they use the phrase to put away. They did not ask, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Right? Okay? So that's the first thing that we need to understand here. And so I want to... Uh, want to um, Notice here as we go through that that they can they use this okay, um, he answered and said to them, "What did Moses command you?" So so Yeshua's response is, or Jesus's response is, "What's the Torah say?" Okay, and this is a really good answer that Pastor Jennings, you know, the Torah doesn't apply, right? He he wants to say the law doesn't apply; it's all done away with. And yet, where does Jesus go for the answer? He says. What did Moses command you? Okay, and so he's going to point them at Moses because they have misquoted Moses. They twisted Moses to try to uh, to trip him, and he says, "What did Moses say?" And they answer correctly. They say Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. Okay, so. They specifically say, Moses says, write a bill of divorce. Here's where the word divorce shows up, and to put her away. So let's pause right here, and let's go to where this happens in the law of Moses, because Jesus says, what does Moses say? Okay, so he points to Moses. So keep your finger in your Bible, or we're going to come back to uh, back to Mark chapter 10. But let's go to Deuteronomy Uh Deuteronomy chapter 20, uh, it's going to be Deuteronomy chapter 24. I'm going to put this right here and then just we'll just back this up and go chapter 24 and see what Deuteronomy chapter 24 says. Deuteronomy 24 says, When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it comes to pass that she finds no favor in his eyes because he hath found some uncleanness, in her, okay. This is something that is uh, typically understood to be of a sexual nature, okay. So she's she's uh, stepping out or something of that sort. Then let him write her a bill of divorcement, okay. So here's the bill of divorcement, and put it in her hand or give it in her hand, and send her out of his house. Send her out. So we see that there are really three parts here. A lot of times it's understood or translated as two parts. We've really got three pieces here. He says, write a bill of divorce, put it in her hand, send her out of the house. Three parts, okay? That's what Moses said, okay? Now I want to go on and make a little another point out of this passage before we go back to Mark and recognize what the conversation is between Yeshua and the Pharisees. And it's not whether or not divorce is legal. Okay? So, here we go. And when when she is departed from his house, she may go and be another man's. Okay? Wife is supplied here, but she may go. Moses says it's okay for her to go be. This is the word of God. This isn't, this isn't the word of Moses. This is the word of God that Moses is the, is the mouthpiece for. Okay? So for people who say that, that, uh, that you know, divorce is against, uh, you know, or that God doesn't allow divorce or that God hates divorce, I'm going to prove to you that God hates divorce is also a false translation. Okay? What he hates is putting away, and that's what the Pharisees are doing. So we're going we're gonna to go back and understand that in a minute. But right here, God's word says when she is de- departed out of his house, she may go to be another man's, okay? It's perfectly legal, okay? Then in the next verse, and if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorce, and giveth in her hand, and sendeth her out of the house. Notice again, exactly the same three pieces. Write her a bill of divorcement, okay? And put it in her hand, and sending her out of the house. 
Or if the latter husband die, now she's a widow, which took her to be his woman, okay? Her former husband, the first husband, the husband in verse number one, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his woman. After that, she is defiled, for that is abomination before Yahweh, and thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which Yahweh thy Elohim giveth thee for an inheritance, or the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. The point is, is she may not return to the first husband, according to the law. She may not return to the first husband. She has been defiled. And this has to do with mixing seed. It doesn't say that she can't go on to be someone else's wife. Um, it's not ideal. Uh, it is not the way God designed things to work, as we will see the point that Yeshua is making with the Pharisees. He makes two points with them, okay? Number one, his point is that God designed marriage to be together and inseparable. And number two, um, he, he does not want, you know, he, he, his design was not for, you know, this constant mixing, okay? So, anyway. The point from the passage that Yeshua points to is that there is a three-step process. Write the bill of divorce, put it in her hand, send her away. Okay, you can see that in Deuteronomy chapter 24. Okay, now let's go back to Mark chapter, um, Mark chapter 10, and let's continue where we were. Okay. So my computer running a little bit slow this morning. It's not bouncing over there right away, but here we go. So um, they said Mo Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and put her away. Okay, now let's take a look for just a second at the uh, Greek behind this. Okay, so I want you to understand. <clears throat> we look at the Greek words right here, and we go down and we can write suffer a bill of divorcement. This is the word divorce right here that is being used. It is uh, the Greek word 647 or Strong's G647. And the word is apostasion, okay, or apostasy. This is where we get the word apostasy from, okay, apostasion, okay, right here. And it says then, and put her away, Okay, this is the next phrase, put her away. And this is a different word. This is G630, and it's apollo, apollo, okay? Two different words, two different functions, okay? They, uh, they start with the letter A uh, or A-P-O, but they are two different words, and they do two different things, okay? So let's look at, I want to look at this word for just a second. We're going to open the word up in uh, Blue Letter Bible, okay? So all you have to do is click on the number of the word, and it will open up the word for us so that we can see a little bit more about it. This word um, <clears throat> is used about, I don't know, what's it say? This is uh, 69 times right here. And of the uses, it's uh, uses are release, put away, send away, let go, set at liberty, let depart, dismiss. Okay, so those are all uses of this word. I don't see divorce listed in here. Do you? I mean, I'm looking at it. I don't see divorce as a proper translation for this word. Set free, let go, dismiss, so on and so forth. So we're going to scroll down here to some of the uses of this word. This tells us that the word is used um, 69 times in 63 verses in the Textus Receptus, okay? Um, and that's going to be a particular uh, uh, group of Greek translation or, or Greek manuscripts would be the Textus Receptus. And that is the group of manuscripts that um, the King James is based on. You've got two different major groups. Uh, they are about 99% identical, couple very minor differences between them. That's the, the KJ was based on the TR, okay? So a little bit of background there for you. And I know <clears throat> some of you guys are like, well, what, you know, Pete, what do you know about all of this? Um, not bragging. I just, I have a master's degree 
a seminary degree, and I've been in ministry for about 24 or 25 years, something like that. Um, and with that comes some study in Greek, some study in Hebrew, and at the very least an understanding back when I was working hard copy with all of these, being able to use all of these, uh, use Thayer's, use Brown Driver, uh, yeah, Brown Driver Briggs, use uh, some of the other lexicons as well as just your basic strongs for finding and tracing a word. How is it used? Okay, so... <clears throat> This will give you some background right quick, because I know a lot of people criticize in the comments were criticizing me saying, what do you know about anything? Been doing this for 25 years. OK, um, I've been in ministry for 25 years. And then. Uh, <clears throat> so, I, you know, I'm not, not going to be comparing notes, but I, I do have a master's degree in this area. OK, <clears throat> so let's take a look at this word for sending away that. Um, that Gino wants to use like divorce, but it's not. It's two different words. And so the Pharisees are asking about sending away. They're not asking about divorce. Okay, so let's see how sending away is used. Is it, does it equal divorce or not? What does it really mean? Okay, um, so let's, uh, let's go rolling down here, look at some different, because there's some places that... <clears throat> that we tend to interpret it as divorce. When Joseph, her husband being a just man and not willing to make her a public example was minded to put her away privily. Okay, was he divorcing her? He was betrothed. Some would say, oh yeah, 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 this is a divorce. No, it's not, okay? So we wanna scroll down and use and, and see how this is used in a lot of other places. Because Yeshua's, Yeshua's use of, or his response to this particular question is very consistent, okay? We see it in Matthew chapter 5, right here, 31 and 32, where he says, Whoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorce. He doesn't say, don't divorce. He says, uh, you know, put away plus divorce. He's saying you've got to have both parts. If you're going to send her out, if you're going to send her away, you've got to release her so that she can be remarried. He says that right here, Matthew chapter 5. But I say to you, whoever shall put away his wife except for the cause of fornication causes her to commit adultery, and whoever shall marry her that is put away. Okay, it's not marry her that is divorced, it's put away. This is a wrong translation of that word committeth adultery <clears throat> because she has not been released properly and we'll go back I'm going to hit this really hard here in a little bit and explain why Gino is wrong and why he binds people okay and why this is a major hurt to women okay so uh, here we go and when it was evening, the disciples came to him saying, this is a uh, desert place and the time is now past. Send away or send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals or food. Here's the point. He's not divorcing them. This isn't divorce. He's sending them away. Okay. Same thing. Straightway, Yeshua constrained his disciples to get into a ship and go uh, before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. He's not divorcing them. He's sending them away, okay? And this is the consistent use of the word all the way through Scripture, okay? Uh, Matthew chapter 15, Yeshua called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitudes because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat, and I will not send them away. Send away. It's the same word, apolio, uh, uh, Okay? lest they faint in the way, okay? Over and over. So we get to Matthew chapter 19. This is the same story that we are reading in Mark chapter 10 right now. And again, you will notice right here, they say unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement, okay? Apostasis and put away, uh, apol uh, apolio, right? We can go back and look at the look at the two words. Okay, T 
two different words, two different steps. The two have to be done. Moses says you've got to do both of those in order for a woman to be released. If you only do one, send her away, she is still married. She has no bill of divorce. This is the great error that Gino is not understanding in the scriptures, which is why he misreads those passages. Let's see. Here we go. Here's another one. Therefore, when they were together, gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, or send away to you, Barabbas or Yeshua, who is called the Mashiach, Jesus, which is called Christ? Question. Pilate is not divorcing Barabbas. He's sending him away, okay? This over and over and over, all the way through Scripture. Then he sent away, or he released Barabbas unto them, uh, and when he had scourged Yeshua, he delivered him to be crucified, right? Guys, it's two different words. So when Gino points at Mark chapter 10, which is where we're going to go back to right now, and, you know, I could show you a, a... a dozen, two dozen more examples. Send away does not mean divorce. It does not mean divorce. Okay? So let's go back to Mark chapter 10. All right? And again, y'all can learn to use these tools. Check people's work. Don't just because the pastor tells you something does not mean it is rock solid truth. You are responsible to do your own due diligence. You are responsible to do your own research, okay? And this is a tool that you can easily learn to use. There's a great, listen, right here, my cell phone. I'm not, uh, I guess it just flipped on. But listen, I have the Blue Letter Bible app on there so that I can look stuff up on the fly. It's easy to do. It's a free app. It's a great tool for you and your Bible studying. And I'm advertising. They're getting free advertisement right now. I strongly recommend blueletterbible.org or the Blue Letter Bible app. Put that on your phone and check your pastor's work. (coughs) So let's uh, let's continue here. So, uh, uh, and they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorce and to put her away. And Yeshua answered and said to them, For the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. Okay? So why did he write the precept? Because they were looking for a way to separate or divide or dissolve the marriage. Yes. Yes. That is a hard-hearted thing to do. God's design from the beginning was for marriage to be indissoluble, to not come apart, for the two to be one flesh and then not be taken apart. That's Yeshua's point. That's the point that Jesus is making. It's kind of like taking two pieces of duct tape and sticking them together, and then you try to rip them apart. It tears stuff up. It hurts families. It hurts people. It leaves holes in hearts. It destroys family. It destroys wealth. It destroys everything that the man, head of his house, is supposed to be building. Okay? That is Jesus' point right here. Okay? That's his primary point. But with his point, his secondary point is that you can't do half of it just send her away without giving her a certificate of divorce because now she is out in the world and she doesn't have the ability to provide for herself. She doesn't have the ability to protect and take care of herself because she's still married to her husband um, because he has not properly released her according to the law of Moses. Okay, now let's continue here. Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart he wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of creation God made them male and female. Right? Male and female, the woman is taken out of the man. Right? The point is when they're put back together, you shouldn't tear them back apart. Okay? For this cause, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his woman. Okay? And they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain but one flesh. Now, Gino makes a really big deal out of this verse right here. Twain, two, 
one, right? All this kind of stuff. Not two or three or four or five. Listen, let's stop and think about this for just a second. I absolutely agree. Man, woman, the two become one flesh. But Scripture clearly teaches over and over and over, all through Scripture, including in the New Testament, and I can show it to you in other places in Scripture. We're not going there today. But it clearly shows that a man can have a one flesh union with more than one woman. Period. End of story. There's no debating it. There's not a single place in Scripture that God calls that sin. In fact, as in my previous video where Gino makes a big deal out of one wife, God have one wife. That's not what God says about himself. At least five times in Scripture, God calls himself the husband of two wives. So one of the things that, that you can do, go look and see if Jacob is called, if Leah and Rachel and Bilhah and Zilpah are called the wives of Jacob. Scripture does. Scripture, scripture doesn't say Leah's the wife and all the rest of them are adulteresses. Now, Gino will say God allowed that back then. Well, then what you're saying is that God has changing weights and standards that God can't make up his mind on what the law says or that God has unequal weights and measures. But if you look up unequal weights and measures, at least four times in Scripture, God says that unequal weights and measures are an abomination. So would God do something, have unequal weights and measures, that is an abomination? Of course not. Over and over and over, Scripture is consistent, the old and the new. And, by the way, God never calls it the Old Testament or the New Testament. It's all one book, one revelation that is continuous, and he doesn't change. That's why Yeshua, Jesus, over and over points to Moses, and he says Moses. In fact, he says, uh, let's, let's go here real quick. I'm going to go to one other side verse. Let's do a side verse real quick. We're going to go to Luke 16, and we're going to run down to the end of the chapter, Luke chapter 16, and I want to show you something. Right down here, verse 32, I think it is. 31. Uh, Jesus, and he said unto them, this is Yeshua, and he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. See, you won't hear Moses and the prophets, which means you don't know what Jesus is really talking about or who Jesus really is. That's what he says. In fact, elsewhere in Matthew, Matthew chapter 15, 24, he says, I came only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which that should make you scratch your head. Are you part of the lost sheep of the house of Israel? If you are, then maybe the laws and rules of Israel apply to you. Different topic for another day. I do cover some of that in my other videos. Back to Mark chapter 10, because we want to continue to hit this right, good and hard. Okay, Mark chapter 10. We go on down here. <clears throat> Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man put asunder, let not man. He's not talking about monogamy. He's talking about the inseparability of, of people. Okay? He's not talking about monogamy. Okay? Gino wants to make this about monogamy, but that's not what this is about. God said nothing when David, David was married to Michael. That was the, that was the daughter of the king, King Saul, Shaul, that, uh, that uh, David got for killing Goliath, right? So after David got Michal, Michael, he um, was on the run from Saul who was trying to kill him. And it was during that time frame in 1 Samuel chapter 25 that uh, he marries a widow named Avigail. And at the end of that chapter, he marries a, a woman from Jezreel named Ahinoam. 
He's not called out for adultery. God doesn't say anything to him. He's a man after God's own heart. He's literally writing scripture. You read it from your pulpits. You sing it in your psalms. And then he married Makkah and Eglah and Hagit. Uh, And there were, I think, two others. Plus he had ten concubines. God said zero, nothing to him about adultery. Did God just not have a heart? Maybe he was absent? Maybe he didn't have the stones to address David. I mean, really, this is the king of Israel. I can't talk to him, right? No, it was not divorce until David took the wife of Uriah the Hittite. That's when first or uh, second Samuel chapter 12, that's where Nathan the prophet shows up and says, "You are that man." And even in addressing him, second Samuel chapter 8 or chapter 12 verse 8, he's, uh, God says through the prophet that if you had wanted more wives, I would have given them to you. Just don't take somebody else's wife. That's the definition of adultery, is taking somebody else's wife. It's not taking a second or third or fourth wife. That is not adultery. Nowhere ever in Scripture is that adultery. In fact, I've got another video where I talk about Jesus' perspective on polygyny. And specifically, Jesus talks about himself as having more than one bride in multiple places in Scripture. But you won't see it in the English translations because it's a translation and the translators had a monogamy-only bias on. They don't actually translate what the Greek says, and we've got the manuscripts. The manuscripts say marriages. Matthew chapter 25, verse 10 says that Jesus takes the, in his parable, takes the five virgins into the marriages, plural, chamber. That's what he does. Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 through 9 or 10, at least four times in that passage, he uses marriages, plural, talking about himself. Okay? So, right here, he's not, he's... Jesus isn't waffling back and forth on whether or not a man can have more than one woman. He's saying you can't tear that apart. You can't disassemble. You can't separate what God has joined together. That's the point of this passage, okay? So let's continue. Uh, and in the house, this, uh, his disciples asked him again of the same matter. And he said unto them, Whoso shall put away, it doesn't say divorce, this is not two-part. This is if you just send her away and you don't give her the bill of divorce, she's not divorced. She's still married. This is why she commits adultery if she marries, if she has relations with another man, or if, um, if a man takes her, okay? If a woman shall be put away, she's not divorced. This is not divorce. This is simply being sent away. She's still legally married to uh, her husband. If a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she commits adultery. Right? And I think the next verse is still part of this. Nope, that moves on into the next topic. But here's the point. She's not divorced. Gino's wrong on this. And here's the problem. He's teaching others that they can't be remarried because they've been married before. In fact, I think I've even heard him say that if a woman's been married more than once, she needs to go back to her first husband. God's Word says that's an abomination. Gino's teaching abomination. He's teaching bondage. This is falsehood. It's a lie. The whole subject here is divorcing properly. The Pharisees were testing him to see if he would answer the question properly. And he says, no, 
do not send her away without giving her a bill of divorce. But that's not God's original plan. God's original plan is for her not to be sent away at all. His original plan is to maintain that one flesh union. But nowhere in here is he saying that, you, that a man can only have one wife. It's just not there. It's nowhere in Scripture. You'll never find it. And I defy Geno Jennings or any other fool, false prophet, to prove from Scripture alone that polygyny is a sin. Because it's not. Nowhere, ever in Scripture. Nowhere. It's not there. You won't find it. There's nothing in Scripture that teaches that a man cannot have more than one wife. I've got, uh, you'll, you'll notice in the, in the show notes, it, this is in every video I've got. There are links to two papers that I've written uh, that are on academia.edu. They're both about 10 or 11 pages, fairly short. It's a quick read for you. One of them is titled, Jesus' Perspective on Polygyny. The other is Paul's perspective on polygyny, and it deals with some of the verses that Christendom likes to bring out. But I can prove to you, every single one of those, that the verses are wrong or they're mistranslated or misquoted. Because the church fathers hated Hebrew, they hated the Jews, they hated the Hebraic lifestyle. Instead, they loved their Greco-Roman law, and monogamy only comes straight out of Greco-Romanism. I can prove that, too. That's not a scripture concept. That's a pagan concept because, you know, to ha having to do with the worship of Hera and Juno, goddesses, and it comes from the worship of Asherah. Go back and watch my video um, Baal, Asherah, and the monogamy-only cult. So what Gino is teaching you is false. And you need, to be, you need to understand that. Okay? This whole passage that we just looked at, the passage that he reads, or Williams reads, and, he, and he's, you know, showboating on, says put away, put away, put away. I want you to listen to it. It says put away. It does not say divorce. It does not say divorce. We need to go back and watch a piece of this just so you can see. I want you to hear what Williams is reading, okay? Hear what Williams is reading because this says put away. It does not say divorce. And, and many of you out there are living with pain because you think you can never be remarried. You made a mistake somewhere along the line and you're stuck in this place that Gino says, if you want to be holy, you can never, never remarry. Paul says, marry. Says remarry. In fact, Paul tells, um, I think it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Let me, let me find this because this is important. So I don't see that immediately in my, it's, uh, it's right there. I'll, I'll show you something else real quick in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. But I want to speak to those of you who have been divorced, okay? You're legally divorced, okay? You had, uh, you have papers. You've been released by your husband or your wife or whatever. That's a tragedy, okay? It's not a good thing, right? It's not the way God designed it. It's a painful thing, all right? However, that is, is the unfortunate circumstance that this culture has. I want you to understand there's hope and there is the, the opportunity to be remarried properly and to walk righteously. Okay? I want you to understand this. Okay? Um, but first off, let's, let, let me show you a couple things. And I'm going to run right here first. Let's go to... I'm going to change over to the uh, NASB 95. That's, that is my preferred um, translation. Easier to read, very true to, uh, to Scripture, to the original um, Greek and Hebrew in most places. But even there, um, they get some of this wrong here uh, in terms of properly understanding 
sending away and divorce because the translators are wearing glasses with filters on them, right? Every time we look at something, we always look at it with a filter. We have filters in our mind, okay? And so they're looking at, at the original manuscripts with a monogamy-only filter that's not in Scripture. It's nowhere there. But let's go for just a second to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I'm going to show you something real quick in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Uh, we can do it right here. This is, this will get us. And I'm not going to talk about 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 2. I think I talked about that in my last video. If not, I will uh, I'll go I can go back and cover that later on. But um where was it? I've got it marked in my in my hard copy here. Uh, so verse 13. Let's back up to to 1 Corinthians chapter uh 7 verse 13. I'll put to, to the, we'll start in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 12, okay? But to the rest I say, not to, not the Lord, that if any brother has a wife who is an unbeliever and she consents to live with him, he must not, this actually is probably send her away. We can look at this very quickly. Let's see what this says, okay? Send her away. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter, it says leave her, but I'm going to bet you. This is divorce. This is actually a different word. Must not divorce is what's being put here. Let's see what that says. Um, there we go. Coming up. Aphemi. Okay. And this is, this is used a lot of times. Leave, suffer, forgive, let, forsake, let alone. So again, this is not a divorce word here. Okay. Essentially, it's to turn her out, okay? Um, this is not a divorce word, <clears throat> okay? He must not turn her out. And let's double check. I want to double check that this is what we're looking at. He must not divorce her. This is the same thing. If she consents to live with him, he must not turn her out or let her go, okay? It's... Right there in the uh, KJ, they, they use divorce, but that's not what this word says, okay? So this is depart from, same thing. But to the married, I give instructions, I not the Lord, that the wife should not depart from her husband. It doesn't say divorce. But if she does leave, she must remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband. <coughs> in this circumstance, she doesn't have a divorce, Okay. She's, she's, it's the same as being sent away, okay? And that the husband should not uh, divorce or leave his wife. See, the, it, the word is not divorce. It's actually just leave, okay? Again, if you're going to release the woman, it must be legally. And, and legally, according to the Torah, involves multiple parts. Uh, writing her a bill of divorce, putting it in her hand, and sending her away. But what I wanted to find is something else, and so I'll show you how we're going to look for it. Uh, there's a passage that says that uh, let her be married only in the Lord, okay? So let's say married in the Lord, okay? There is a passage that says this. So, um, and it's in... Oh, okay, right here. It's in, it is in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. It's just farther down. A wife is bound as long as her husband lives, but if her husband is dead, or she is to be married to whom she wishes only in the Lord. And I think the principle that we see here is that if, uh, you know, even if you're divorced, now you're legally divorced, okay? And there's no way of going back. Let's, may, let's say maybe you've had relations with another man somewhere along the line, okay? I'm not judging. I'm just saying... If that happened, then you cannot, according to Deuteronomy, return to your first husband. It's an abomination. But you can be remarried, okay? If you are legally divorced, you can be remarried. And the principle here is to make sure that you're married in the Lord, okay? So I want you to understand that. You can be remarried, okay? Um, this idea that you can't ever be married uh, in... 
First Timothy chapter five, it says, uh, and we'll go to First Timothy chapter. Let's back up here and go to First Timothy chapter five, right here. Um, is where there's a passage of scripture that deals with a single woman, and in this case, it's going to be a younger widow. But it basically says that um, uh, but refuse to put younger widows on the list for when they feel sensual desires in disregard of Messiah. They want to get married. Listen, there's nothing wrong with having desires. God gave you desires, okay? But if you've got desires, whatever those may be, you know, for, for fulfillment and you need affection, you need uh, physical, uh, physical relations, God designed us to, to need those. That's how children are made. That's how procreation. That's how a man and woman are bound together, okay? It's part of the glue that holds them together. There's nothing wrong with those things. But if you're feeling those things, they've got to be fulfilled righteously. And the righteous way, right here, Paul says, go get married. Okay? This is the deal. Go get married. Okay? So I want to go back to, to what we were talking about in Mark chapter 10. Okay? Putting away is not divorce. Putting away is sending her away without releasing her. Therefore, she's still married. It's binding the woman so that she cannot marry someone else, but throwing her out of the house so you don't have to support her. That's wickedness. And that's what Yeshua is, is, uh, is getting after them for. It was common in that day. Okay? And he says, don't marry. Uh, one other quick point. We can go to uh, John chapter 4, okay? John chapter 4, where the woman at the well, okay? <clears throat> Yeshua tells the woman at the well to go get her husband, right? Right here. <clears throat> John chapter 4, starting at verse 16. He said to her, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and says, I have no husband. And Yeshua answers, uh, or said to her, you have correctly said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands. He doesn't say you had one husband and then five adulterous affairs. He says you've had five husbands, and the one whom you have now is not your husband. This you have said truly. Okay? Well, when he said, go, get your, uh, go call your husband, she, he's, he's referring her to the last man that she's with because she's in relation. She's with him, okay? Um, and so that's who she's supposed to go get. He doesn't say go get your first husband. He says you've had five husbands, right? And the one that you have now is not your husband, right? So the point being, again, that Yeshua doesn't say go back to your first one because he knows that would be an abomination. He says He's essentially saying, go get, go get the man that you belong to. That would be her most recent husband. And she's stepping out on him, apparently, because the one that she has now is not her husband. Right? So, again, the point being that, that um, A, a woman can get remarried. Right there, he, uh, he addresses that she's had five husbands. Okay? Um, but also... The point that's being made in Mark chapter 10 is that the marriage isn't supposed to be torn apart. And the putting away does not righteously release the woman. It's not God's desire or design that a marriage be broken up. However, if it is for uncleanness, then it's a three-part process. Write the bill of divorce, put it in her hand, send her away. And that whole passage is only about sending away. It's not about the other two. The women were not being released righteously, and so they're still married, and so therefore it is adultery if you are if if she had relations with a man or with if a man had relations with her. She's still married. That's why it's adultery, not because it is it is anything else. Now Gino's final point that he made is, you know, having multiple wives, he, he thinks that's adultery, and it's not. Nowhere ever is that called adultery. It's only, a, the only address that we have of adultery is when David takes another man's wife, not when he's taking additional wives, 
it's not adultery. And so Gino's lying. He's telling you falsehoods. And so you need, to, you need to study this out. You need to go dig in. I've got lots of videos on the subject. I recommend you go, go, go do your own due diligence because what you're being taught is binding your conscience. It's a falsehood that binds you. And there's freedom in the truth of the word. Uh, my heart particularly goes out to those who have, who have had a divorce or have a divorce on their hands. Not a good thing. It's a very painful thing. It's a damaging thing. It's not what God wants. I did say uh, that I would address the God hates divorce thing. Let's go to Malachi chapter uh, Malachi chapter 2 is where that shows up, I believe. Or Malachi chapter 2. And I think it's verse 16-ish. Let's go down here and see. This right here, okay? For I hate divorce. You know what? The word isn't divorce right there. It's sending away. God's word is consistent. He hates sending away and not properly taking care of the woman. Not properly releasing her so that she can be remarried and be protected and cared for and provided for and have her needs met. That's what this is all about. Okay? Same thing. Sending away right there. Okay? So, guys, you need to do your studying. Okay? Don't just take Gino's word or any other pastor's. Don't take my word for it. Read. Study. Show yourself approved. It doesn't say show somebody else approved. And it, they can't show you approved. It says study to show yourself approved. A workman who need not be ashamed. And this is a really good tool for you, Blue Letter Bible. Anyway, fantastic, good stuff, another hard message, and there are going to be a whole lot of people that are unhappy with me. So be it. I really don't care, all right? I'm going to give you the truth, unvarnished. And so I pray that, uh, that you will take a hard look at this. And for those who, uh, who've stuck with me all the way through, I appreciate it. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. Uh, would love to have you with us for other Bible studies as we go down the road. So for King and Kingdom, I bid you shalom.